All sentient beings whose numbers are as innumerable as space is vast have to be established in the state of full awakening of Buddhahood. This full awakening of Buddhahood is the only lasting bliss, the only lasting happiness there is. To bring about this, uh, uh, to bring about exactly this should be our motivation, should be the goal at the bottom of our hearts. Therefore, with this aim in mind, we should now set out to listen to the instructions to the explanation of the profound path as it has been explained in the words of the incomparable Dakpo Rinpoche or Gampopa in his text, The Jewel Ornament of Liberation. From among the six topics or chapters as they are contained in Gampopa's Jewel Ornament of, uh, of Liberation, in the preceding years we have heard the first three. The first topic deals with the fact that we are all endowed with the potential for the achievement of such awakening of Buddhahood, with the potential that is commonly known as uh, Buddha nature or Buddha essence. The second uh, topic deals with the working basis that we need in order to actualize this, which is nothing else but our precious human body, the various conditions which are necessary to bring such a human body about, and so forth. And the third chapter deals with the uh, with the condition that we have to meet in order to make good use of this potential and of this human body, which is the so-called spiritual friend, the teacher or lama or guru. Now, having brought these three conditions together, uh, then we move on to the fourth chapter, which deals with the instructions, the liberating instructions which we have to request from such a teacher. Simply having met one is not in itself enough. We need to receive instructions. And these instructions are being summarized in various points by way of pointing out what it is that we actually have to, uh, that we have to uh, uh, contemplate, that we have to reflect upon, namely the fact that all phenomena and appearances are out of themselves, empty, free of any inherent self-nature, that all erroneous uh, um, deeds lead to suffering, and therefore that uh, life within this cycle of uh, existence is full of shortcomings as we are being propelled forward by the force of our own karma, of our own deeds, that which we have performed in uh, this and former lifetimes, and then giving rise to the enlightened attitude which lets us strive to uh, find a way out of such suffering and which lets us strive to bring about the end of such suffering for all beings. This would uh, summarize all the uh, ascend of, this would summarize all the teachings. This would be the essence of all that which is to be contemplated or which is to be practiced. <laughs> So from, from among these uh, points, or concerning with the, uh, these points, uh, Gampopa continues to say in his text that uh, these can be summarized into three topics, which are that which is to be known about uh, uh, 
about impermanence, which is the first of the four topics which we could possibly request instructions about from our spiritual friends or teachers. So the first one deals with impermanence, with the perishable nature of everything that appears and exists. And there we have heard uh, about the impermanence. We have heard that there are four types. We have uh, heard yesterday about the initial, the coarse type, which deals predominantly with the outer world. Today we will uh, hear about the uh, second type, the uh, inner kind of impermanence, which deals with the beings that live within this world. As Gampopa has uh, uh, put it in uh, his uh, corresponding verse, Everything that is to be known about, uh, or that could possibly be known about uh, impermanence, can be summarized under three topics. The first is the categorization of the various types. The second is the means of familiarizing oneself with them. And the third is the benefit of doing so. So, having heard about the first type, we will now proceed with the second type, the explanation of the second type of impermanence. Mm -hmm. Now concerning the impermanence that pertains to the beings which live within this world, this can again be uh, categorized into two subcategories, mainly uh, the uh, impermanence of other beings that we can perceive, and then finally the impermanence of ourselves, understanding that uh, we ourselves are just as impermanent as all the other beings. Now concerning the impermanence uh, of beings in this world, no matter where they might live within the three realms or the three worlds, whether they uh, might live in the, uh, in the uh, desire realm or the form realm or the formless realm, there is a quote from a sutra, the name of which escapes me just as much as Christoph, uh, in which the Buddha himself has said that all of, these, uh, uh, all of these types of existence, in Tibetan the sutra is called the Chache Rilpa Sutra, we don't know what that is in Sanskrit, the Buddha says that all of, within all of these different realms or, or modes of existence, existence is as fleeting as clouds in the autumn sky. Uh, clouds in the autumn sky in ancient India, that was just after the rainy season, such clouds have the nature of not lasting very long. They appear, they disappear in rapid succession, so they, uh, they are highly, highly impermanent. So he uses this analogy in order to uh, um, make us understand that wherever one could possibly have an existence within any of these three realms, it is highly impermanent. There is nowhere within any of these three realms where one could possibly live forever. Therefore, these, uh, these lives are as impermanent as, sky, as clouds in the autumn skies. In this way, reflecting upon the impermanence of others, this leads us directly up to the reflection about uh, on impermanence of ourselves. If by way of uh, looking at our surroundings, by way of looking at uh, those whom we know and so forth, uh, we come to the conclusion that all beings within this world, no matter who they are, no matter where, under what circumstances they exist, that they are impermanent, that they are subject to death, then why on earth would we believe that we are not? Why on earth would we believe that uh, 
of all of these beings who are subject to death, who are subject to impermanence, we are the single one which is uh, exempt from this. So in this way, having uh, uh, convinced ourselves that uh, this is truly so for others, we come to the logical, uh, to the logical conclusion that uh, this, by necessity, must be just the same for ourselves. Det är en sudduna. Det är Gudin som betalar samma dana, nämligen det var jag. Det är en kamodi där ni har varit tjua. Det är en kadushire. Sen är det en tjärnäva. Gudin är ivan. Det är en tjua där tjigang med dombar. Norrlång tjur tjärnbo. Mängden där tjärnbo. Tota sigi tjärnbo. Det är en tjua där tjärnbo. Det är en tjua där tjärnbo. Tjua tådå i ombel kassu. Det är en tjua där tjärnbo. Det är en tjua där tjärnbo. But真的就是说，当年不是就吃完，当年不是吃完，因为当我戒了戒了，戒了戒了戒了戒了，你呢？吃完就吃完了。对，因为当年不是就吃完了，当年不是吃完了，没吃完，他都没完了，你不是就
uh, which we could put forth uh, in order to say, okay, we're going to live that and that long and we will only die and then and then, but not just now. Death does indeed come completely unannounced and it could uh, happen any moment. And then, <coughs> when death finally arrives at our doorstep, we simply have to admit to ourselves that whatever means we have at our disposal, what, uh, disposal whatever wealth we possess, whatever influence we Possess, possess whatever fame we might possess is of no avail whatsoever. Death will come, death is there, and that's just that. Now, the great Indian master Shantideva, in his uh, uh, famous work, the Bodhicharya Vatara, the entering upon the path of the conduct of a bodhisattva, has uh, uh, explained these very same topics. He has uh, uh, said in a verse which I only remember very roughly, he has said, not knowing what will come first, the tomorrow or death, we have to prepare for the hereafter. This is what has to be done. This is the job that we have to do. This is what we have to take care of. And indeed, this is uh, so. There's no way around it. We simply have to accept that fact because it is, uh, it is uh, a simple fundamental truth of this life. Therefore, if we remind ourselves of such facts, of these facts constantly, then we will not put off that which is truly important anymore in our lives. We will not put off our learning and practicing of Dharma to the next day, thinking, oh well, death will come okay, but it will not come just tomorrow or day after, there still is some time. So practice learning some Dharma, I can do that tomorrow or day after tomorrow, possibly even next year. Having truly understood the significance of these fundamental points, we will start to practice and study and learn the Dharma right here and now and not waste our time anymore. And whenever we have then concluded certain studies or certain practices, then uh, we will always be accompanied by a joyful feeling because uh, we have the conviction, we have the uh, knowledge from our own experience that such and such has been completed and we can move on to the next step upon the path and in this way make our lives truly meaningful. So therefore, never forgetting the simple truths of imminent death which comes uh, without uh, announcing itself uh, many days beforehand, simply reminding oneself of that, lets one strive to learn and practice uh, so much more diligently. <laughs> Now, having truly understood the significance of all of these points, what is the what is the fruit, what is the benefit thereof? The benefit simply is that uh, we let go of all of these meaningless, uh, uh, meaningless activities, our clinging to all kinds of sense pleasures, to all kinds of possessions and wealth and what's not, uh, our, our wishing for this and that. All of this, all of a sudden, does not seem important to us anymore. We have familiarized ourselves to that, uh, to such an extent with the, uh, with the uh, indisputable truth of the fact of uh, impermanence that uh, we simply resolve not to waste our precious lifetime anymore with running after such things. And having truly understood the significance of these points, then we can set out to, uh, to uh, learn and uh, practice the Dharma according to the ideal or according to the, to the ideas of what is called the greater 
Vehigoti Mahayana. We will then uh, proceed from this initial uh, recognition. We will then proceed to travel to traverse the path of a Dharma practitioner in such a way that uh, uh, we will uh, we will eventually progress upon it. Tanibadi So this concludes a short explanation of the topic of impermanence, which is the first of the four topics that uh, we could uh, receive from our spiritual friends, our teachers, by way of uh, uh, requesting from them, receiving from them instructions. This brings us then to the second point, which is that of the shortcomings, shortcomings of life within this cycle of existence, commonly, uh, commonly called uh, samsara. Now, having understood about uh, impermanence uh, in itself is not yet enough. We could come to grips with this uh, uh, idea of impermanence simply by thinking, okay, I have understood everything that uh, appears and exists is impermanent, including myself. But since uh, there is uh, not only this one life, but uh, also other lives, uh, well, that doesn't matter very much because whatever I don't manage to finish in this lifetime, that I can uh, uh, continue this in the future life. Now, if we were to think like this, if we were simply taken permanence as a given and leave it at that, uh, that in itself would not be sufficient. That in itself would clearly signify that we have not yet truly understood uh, understood the uh, the crux of the matter, so to speak. Therefore, in order to truly uh, familiarize ourselves with the uh, with this uh, simple fact, what we also have to do is that we have to examine the nature of that which we desire. We have to examine the nature of the objects of our desire. And we have to come to understand that no matter where we could find rebirth within the three realms, uh, that all such existence, all such life within this cycle of existence is invariably uh, characterized by suffering. Therefore, reminding ourselves of that fact and also examining the nature of the objects of our desire and coming to truly understand them as for what they really are is of greatest importance. Therefore, the second contemplation or the second point of uh, instruction that we could receive which deals with the uh, shortcomings of uh, any kind of life existence uh, within this cycle of uh, samsara is of great importance. <laughs> Dujitin 
So having recognized that uh, each and every kind of existence that one could possibly take on within the uh, uh, within this cycle within the three realms, having recognized that they are constantly and invariably characterized by suffering, one uh, has to uh, think about the topic of suffering for a bit. The topic of suffering has been taught uh, in great detail by the Buddha himself. He did not simply say there is suffering and that's that. He explained in great detail how suffering can appear in very coarse ways, how suffering can appear in very subtle ways, and how it can appear in all kinds of combinations which lie between these two extremes. Gampopa, in his text here, The Jewel Element of, of Liberation, again summarizes this in a verse in which he uh, initiates the explanation about suffering, in which he again says, uh, the suffering of conditioning, the suffering of change, and the suffering of suffering, these three fully explain everything that is to be known about this topic. Now, the suffering of being conditioned is the very fundamental condition uh, uh, with which, uh, endowed with which we all find ourselves. Being born into this world in any which way is, uh, is being, uh, uh, always happens invariably under certain circumstances and conditions. So we are absolutely uh, not free from these. And this in itself uh, uh, is the uh, <coughs> potential for suffering. Now, such suffering may not necessarily be clearly and obviously visible to us. Uh, therefore, um, one has to familiarize oneself with this fact thoroughly in order to understand what is, uh, what is being talked about here. Then on top of this, there is the, uh, the suffering of uh, change, and then there uh, we have the suffering of suffering, as it is called. This suffering of conditioning, the initial kind of suffering, simply means that uh, whatever leads to our being born, whatever leads to our experiencing this and that, is being uh, uh, initiated by certain causes. That which we, uh, which we experience are results of causes that have, been, uh, that have been caused in the past. And therefore, in one way or other, they will invariably uh, be experienced as uh, one sort of suffering or the other. Now, familiarizing oneself with that basic fact, this then leads to the next two types of suffering, which is that of change and then the suffering of suffering itself. Then 
시기 아담의 두 하만 인기 동해 라카 대소 사당한 삼삼 동해기 즉 동해 라카 초토에 이르게 동해디 동해시 동해야. This brings us to the second type of suffering, which is the so-called suffering of change. The suffering of change manifests itself in <coughs> everything that uh, does not stay the way it, 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 it presently is. All of these objects of our desire, which uh, uh, produce so much happiness, pleasure in us, uh, will eventually change into something else. It is not as if their self-nature is pleasure or happiness. It is rather that they're made, out, made up of all sorts of components, which by their uh, by, by definition will, as we have heard already, eventually change. So that which today causes us pleasure may cause us tomorrow great displeasure. That which we, uh, which we uh, consume uh, happily, which, uh, which um, we uh, really hanker after, may be completely undesirable for us tomorrow. For instance, our favorite food, if we would eat too much of it, then at a certain time it would become a source of displeasure for us and just not be our favorite food anymore. The whole idea of uh, attaching happiness and pleasure to sense objects uh, is based in our fundamental uh, erroneous way of uh, thinking, in our fundamental uh, obscuration under the influence of which uh, we find ourselves, that we hold uh, ourselves to be true and that as a logical consequence of this, we think that if there is a self, then there must be something other than a self. <coughs> this dualism which we have been upholding uh, for such a long time, that there is the uh, perceiver and that there are objects of perception, this, uh, this distinction which we draw between the two. It is, if one thinks about it uh, logically, indeed the case that whatever causes us pleasure, whatever the object of our pleasure might be, that this in itself is not pleasure by itself. It simply uh, is perceived as such, and our perception may, under, circum under certain circumstances, very well change, and rather quickly so. And this then finally brings us to the third type of uh, suffering, which is called the suffering of suffering. There's nothing too much to be said about this. This kind of suffering uh, means uh, the, the suffering which we can very obviously clearly see, the pain we feel when we're sick. Uh, and uh, the various uh, places in the world which are, uh, which are characterized by intense suffering, the hell rums, the rums of the hungry ghosts, the animals are uh, places of uh, very intense suffering, but also within our own world, uh, we just need to look around ourselves or just look at our own lives, at our own very personal experiences, again and again holds great suffering for us in store. So this is the third kind, and the suffering of suffering, which is very obvious. 네, 대하 약사인 자면도 상식의 약사인 자면도 디나 송발 코레님이 통화나 조회 스탬네 단도지 감수는 전화는 지금이나 조회 스탬기 보마체 코레님이 군두지기 동아 유래 동아 네 동아지 동아 손대 통화 그 코레님이 통화래 대명의 시제나 코레님이 통화인 코레님이 통화 편도 가리요 뭐가 가리요에서나 편인데. Joe,是没有了，就是过完英国没关系。当然，给台湾其他台湾大陆通了呀，我们台湾人嘛，台湾人嘛，通了呀，就是过完了民众的国家，就是通了，你们那个是亚洲族的，你是民族的，你们那，
the upset delta of it is called. Um, oh, where was it? <laughs> yeah, the the Buddha says in this sutra, having recognized the dangers or shortcomings of samsara, great sadness is born without, within us. Fearing the prison walls of this cycle of existence, we happily tear them down. Roughly like that. <laughs> this means to say that once we have truly understood about suffering, the uh, uh, suffering of being conditioned, the uh, suffering of change, and the suffering of suffering itself, uh, itself a great weariness and a great sadness about this is being uh, it, it, it's, is, is being born within us. Uh, we really want to find, want to find a, a way out of such suffering. We recognize indeed that no matter which, uh, in which way, no matter under what conditions we could be born within this cycle of existence, each and every single life will invariably be characterized by one sort of suffering or the other. There simply is no escape from suffering. Now, having in this way recognized this cycle of existence, samsara, as what it is, namely a prison, we develop a healthy fear of this prison. We view that which makes up the life in samsara, all the wheelings and dealings of samsaric life, uh, uh, like prison walls. The entire cycle of existence itself becomes a prison, and everything that keeps us fettered within this prison uh, becomes like a prison wall. We uh, become afraid of them, we develop the fear uh, of them, and then we start to think about uh, what can be done to tear these walls down, what can be done to break through these prison walls, to, through, to gain freedom or liberation from this cycle of existence. Now, simply having recognized that uh, samsara is a prison full of suffering, that in itself is not enough. We have to apply means which uh, lead us out of such suffering. And this, uh, the means uh, which bring about the collapse of these prison walls is that which we know as the attitude or the motivation of the greater vehicle of Mahayana, the application of the means which have been taught within the uh, Mahayana vehicle, all the uh, various uh, uh, trainings that we could undergo. These are the means which will truly, surely lead to our breaking out of this prison, to our tearing down the prison walls of samsara. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We might then wonder what is it that makes us suffer in the first place, which is of course nothing else but the results of our of the causes that we have brought about, that which we call karma or cause and effect. Now to explain that uh, requires some more detail for which we just do not have the time anymore in this session. So Rinpoche will explain about uh, uh, about this in a later session. Oh yeah. Two uh, questions? No.